All right, let's take a look at gravity and centripetal force. If you haven't filled this out yet, pause the video, fill it out, and then come back to check your answers. For gravitational force, did you use the symbol F with a little G next to it? The force of attraction between all masses, and the equation for it looks like this. Force of gravity equals the gravitational constant times mass one times mass two over the distance between the masses squared. It's gravitational force, so it's measured in newtons, and it's an inverse square law, which means as the objects get farther away, the force gets weaker according to the square of the distance. So if you were to double the distance, the force becomes not half as strong, but one-fourth as strong. And if you bring them twice as close, the force doesn't get twice as strong, it, get, it gets four times stronger. Let's take a look at centripetal force. Uh, I will mention before we move on, the gravitational constant here is a very small number. We didn't do any calculations with this number, but it is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. It's a very small number, and it represents that gravity is a very, very weak force. And the only time we even feel it is when we're around very large objects like planets. Centripetal force, we can use a symbol of capital F with a little C next to it, although I'm not going to test you on that. It is an inward or outward force that causes objects to change direction but not speed. It is an inward force. So that means the object is going in a circle, it's changing direction but not speed. This is a force, just like any force, measured in newtons. Some examples could be if you're, whirl if you're swirling like uh, the yo-yo around your head, the tension in the string, that tension would be an example of a centripetal force. Or if you think about a satellite going around the Earth, that um, would be a gravitational force. Gravity when orbiting. Okay, check out the next video where we'll do a review of momentum.